Anne Prescott and Kevin Baker own a successful Hawke's Bay food company. They grow chilies and peppers and process them for chilli paste, relishes, sauces and infused oils. In 2011, Orcona Chilies and Peppers won a Cuisine Award for their Tunisian-style harissa paste. We grow 3,500 plants, various varieties, chilies and capsicums, or peppers as you might want to call them. We are at the farmer's market on a Sunday with our fresh and our jars and bottles as well, and we sell throughout New Zealand. The previous owners brought it when it was selling capsicums, and then they put the chilies in. So we brought it with the chilies and the capsicums established, and they started making the sauce as well. So we're very fortunate that that work was done for us. We started concentrating on what sold well and what varieties grew well. So instead of trying to make lots of different things work, we you know, fine-tuned it down a bit. It's not year-round at the moment, but we're experimenting with that this year because you know, we're just not in the climate. They like it really hot consistently. The strength is that we're quite unique in what we do. Yeah, the weakness is the bugs, <laughs> but everyone gets those, and that's a bit of an ongoing battle, but we try to just stay on top of that as much as we can. The farmer's market is really important. It's um, a place where our customers get to meet us. They see that we grow the fresh, they know that we make it, they get to talk to us about it, they get to taste, you know, and it's a visual as well, and we get to educate them, because it's not all about just being hot with chilies, it's about flavour as well. Some people have never tried chilies before, so we say, well look, start with a little mild one, and when you're used to that, maybe try something hotter. Same with the sauce and relish, and yeah, it's really important from an educational point of view, and getting our brand out there. Yeah, we do a really nice habanero sauce if you want to have a try of it. The business has got really good holding now. It's um, really steady in the market. We've got some really good customers come on board that have made us grow up quite quickly. So we've now started making three of the products in bulk in a factory rather than me trying to do it in the little kitchen we have here. So it's made me sort of expand from that side, sort of realise that it's not all about me having to do everything. I can actually get other people involved. We grow all our own plants from seed and we import most of our seeds and they are from the F1 varieties. Because chilies are self-pollinating, we can't guarantee that what we get the seeds from here are going to be that particular variety, so we get what's called F1. Um, so six weeks from seed to seedling, so, so big, and then from there they get plucked out into little pots and they stay in those for about another six weeks and then they get put into what you see, the planter bags, and from there they get their first string, then they get thinned out, and eventually end up with four strings on the chilies. They're vertigated rather than hydroponic. They sit in bags which have got dirt, and then they have a trickle that's into that bag, which the trace elements and the calcium nitrate and all the goodies go into. So they're trickle fed during the daytime. We've got four tunnel houses, and we've got effectively eight glass houses. The glass houses hold 150 plants each. Pluses and minuses. Not a lot of difference really, maintenance wise the glass are good if you keep on top of it, you know if you lose a piece of glass or two and the wind replace it straight away. We have to whitewash both the glass and the tunnel houses in the heat of the season, so not a lot of difference there. Downside of the glass is that they leak like a sieve so they're absolutely hopeless in the, in the rain, you know you can't really work in them. The tunnel houses are a lot hotter though, they run a lot hotter. It comes down to which plants like it and which environment and that's the combination seems to work. This is a tunnel house, it's got approximately 350 plants. We wanted to trial a winter crop, so the idea of the winter crop, the plants need their bums up off the ground, they've got to keep their bums warm. <laughs> so you keep the roots warm, the plants will thrive. We have got an option of heating in here which we will use, but it'll be more for frost control rather than temperature. So we'll set that at maybe around about 10, 12 degrees, so if it drops below that it'll just keep them warm. So stop them from getting that frost cold and hopefully encourage growth. So we've put a, a reflective weed matting down and then we'll put some sheets of polystyrene down which is going to keep that up off the ground. So what we've tried to achieve is instead of puddles of water sitting in here, we hope that the water will sit on top of the stones and evaporate rather than sink in, and then there won't be that cold hanging around. It's very expensive to heat electrically. We've tried with the diesel heater as well, we've tried. Um, once again, the amount of money you put into the diesel compared to what you actually get out of in fruit value at the end, it's pretty much even. So this is a, just a different experiment just to see if this is a better option. Basically there's six families of chilies. Within that six families there's 185 naturally occurring varieties and then you get your hybrids over and above that. 
So we start out very mild with the capsicums. They come in your normal bell pepper shape capsicum. We also grow the Corno di Toros, which is a nice sweet one, good flavour, great for salads and things. And then you start on your very mild chilies that don't have a lot of heat, just a little bit in the top with the seed and the membrane. Uh, Mexicanas, Anaheim's very popular in Mexican cooking for bulking and almost a tomato -y flavour with them. Here we have the long greens, heats in the top with the seeds in the membrane, good usable chilies, jalapenos, nice and fleshy, take the seed in the membrane out, take a lot of the heat out, you can always add that back in. And then we work our way with getting up into cayennes. Once again the heat's in the top, these are about a 7 or 8 on a 0 to 10 scale. Um, serranos are a good 8, nice intense heat with them, cousin of the jalapenos but just a lot smaller and a lot hotter. Rule the thumb, smaller the chilli the hotter. And then we get up into the ricottos, they're about a 9 on our 0 to 10 scale. They have the black seeds in them, nice and fleshy, good flavour. And lastly the habaneros, hottest commercially grown chilies at this stage, really intense, really nice flavour, used with caution. It's just the 0 to 10 that we use to give people an idea. The recognised scale is the Scoville scale. That works on if you have a teaspoon of a particular chilli, how many teaspoons of water you need to get rid of that heat. And the habaneros are up in the millions, so as you can imagine they're quite intense. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.